Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the uh, Inside Wag Nutrition Podcast. I'm Josh. <laughs> and I am Chris. And we got a cool episode today. Uh, Chris, who are we talking to and what are we talking about? All right, today we are very, very pleased to have joined with us on the pad- podcast, uh, Brittany Werner and Allie Macy, two of our badass coaches on the WAG team. And today uh, we're going to give them the floor to discuss uh, goal setting. So we're rounding out the uh, end of the year here, 2022. Uh, we want all of our clients and anyone just following uh, WAG in general to just uh, have some obtainable tools and usable tools to start out the new year with uh, setting a goal, whether uh, no matter how big or small it may be, uh, we hope that you have some actionable actionable takeaways to um, pursue those goals and achieve them, whether on your own or working with a WAG coach. Um, so yeah. yeah. So who would like to uh, start out or Josh, what do you, yeah. what do you got? Well, um, I, th- I think that uh, when it comes to new year's resol- resolutions, like, I don't know. I have my I, maybe we should just start with with talking about uh, like opinions on New Year's resolutions, because I think this can be like a polarizing topic sometimes. Like some people are all for them. Some people think that they're kind of like lame and outdated. Um, the, it, I've read so many different things and talked to so many different people about it. So um, I guess uh, we'll start with Brittany. What do you think about the traditional like New Year's resolution Starting January first, I am going to do this. I am this, and blah blah blah, like all that stuff. How how do you look at it, and how do you feel about that? I'm here for it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I've always liked that. I like this time of year. I think it's a time that we can set a clean slate, try something new for yourself, try something new for the year. I've always liked the idea of starting over, starting fresh, trying something new and different for yourself. Um, I get why there's a negative spin on it sometimes. It's like, why January 1st? Why not do this earlier in the year or at another time? But I love it. I love like, okay, hey, it's a new year. Let's, it doesn't have to be a new me. It can just be something small that you want to change for yourself. But I love it. I love a fresh take and a new start. I'm here for it. That's cool. I I, mm-hmm. I, I like that. I like that too. Allie? I'm kind of in the same boat. I know in the last couple of years, it's become like the cool thing to hate on New Year's resolutions. Yeah. Um, but And I think there are some potentially like issues with them. And it's mostly just because people, and I'm sure we're going to get into this later, but people will just like set a goal and then to completely forget about it. And there's no action steps to get there. And so that's where things can get a little bit tricky. But in general, like I am all about taking advantage of when there's some momentum. And I think, I don't think that January 1st being this like big fun day to set some goals and feel like you have that blank slate that Brittany talked about, like, that excitement is never going to go away, no matter how many blog posts come out hating on New Year's resolutions, you know, because that's just like how we feel on the Monday or on the first of the month or on the first of the year. And it's just, I don't think there's anything wrong with taking that momentum and running with it as long as you like have a plan. Um, sure. Yeah. I love that. Chris, what do you think? Um, I'm in both parties. I think it just depends on the individual. But I know for me personally, uh, what was it, six, seven years ago when I decided to sign up for WAG? Uh, I decided to sign up in November instead of waiting for the new year. Like, you know, and I think that was like a really triumphant moment for me that really set the stage to rethinking those old uh, patterns that didn't serve me very well or thinking that there's this imaginary line that's crossed in the new year. Um, And I decided to sign up and get the ball rolling before the new year. So I was going into the new year with some momentum already built up and that actually you know, help propel me forward because I had more of an actual plan, not just a statement. So like a a statement without a plan or a goal without a plan is, uh, like we say with Mitch, it's like trying to get to a destination without a roadmap, you know, or a Google direction. So yeah, I I wanted those directions ahead of time, I guess. (laughs) Cool. I love love that too. I think the momentum thing is is a really great point. And that's something that I like to talk about with clients or talk to clients about as well as like, whether don't listen to like anyone else, like don't listen to, you know, some blogger, or s- someone that's on a podcast that thinks it's a big joke. Like mm-hmm. if you, if January 1st is like a big deal and you are like ready to go and you got your list or whatever you have written out that you want to achieve and do like, heck yeah, like go for it. Like January 1st hits. What's it this year? January 1st is, is it a Monday? Uh, is it Sunday. Sunday. A Sunday. Sunday. So yeah, I mean, like, what better um, 
what better way to like kick off the new year it's like monday it's like boom like like let's go i'm all for yeah. using that momentum like to your advantage for mm. sure that's like the universal alignment of like the start of starts right there <laughs> yeah. the new year starts on sunday january 1st here we go yeah <laughs> yeah 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 for real so like um amongst like talking amongst ourselves here um has there been in recent memory a goal that you have set for yourself um for the new year that you have achieved that you can like recall like pretty vividly <clears throat> Brittany's nodding so but we're, let's let's go with Allie <laughs> for this first one <laughs> Brittany's nodding she should go first <laughs> Brittany, well I wanted to yeah <laughs> nod is a lot like, I want to get Allie, get Allie on first and like she's still thinking let's have her go <laughs> yeah I was like I want to get Allie first but Brittany if you're, if you're ready no, like let's first. hear it yeah. I'm thinking no I had I mean historically I have not had new year's resolutions that have panned out to be like super successful like I set like a specific goal and that is what it ended up being and that's something that I think we can talk about as this conversation progresses organically but because I think that goals will morph and change and they should because very rarely I think do we especially in the beginning of your nutrition and fitness journey do you pick a goal and you can see that destination very clearly it, it changes over time but this was one that I actually got right. And it, it, it's more of a wellness goal. And the idea came from a client, oddly enough. And what it was, was about hitting the snooze button. And this was 2020. So from um, New Year's on 2020 was that I was going to stop hitting the snooze button. And I was just a notorious, like, I wouldn't, I know some people are like snoozers, like, you know, six, seven times they're hitting that snooze button. I wasn't that bad, Chris. Um, Chris. <laughs> but oh, oh. I would maybe uh. like three times, maybe. Mm. And just enough where in all it's doing, and I think I knew this, but this client had linked me to an article and I can find it somewhere that basically it's what, what it was telling me was what I knew, but now it was peer reviewed science that I was reading. You're not going back into a deep sleep all that's doing is just prolonging the inevitable. You're wow. not going back into REM sleep. You're not going back into deep sleep. And it's prolonging you from getting up. It's setting up this negative feedback loop of, you know, oh, I don't want to wake up. My bed is so comfortable. It's so cold outside or whatever this, you know, you're feeding yourself this information and, you know, seven minutes or however long that snooze interval is on your phone or your alarm clock. Um, you're so much better off if you just, boom, teach yourself, just get up. So mm -hmm. January 1st, I started it and I have faithfully every morning when my alarm has gone up, I have gotten up and no joke, not being dramatic. It has changed my life. Really? Wow. Yeah. Like just, it changes the way you look at the morning instead of this, like oh, hitting the alarm five more minutes, oh, five more minutes. Right. If you just stand up, like just stand up and do the darn thing. You've got to get up anyway. Like I have to get up. I have three kids. I have a job. I have like things. I have to get up. <laughs> this alarm went off for a reason. Um, and like just laying there for five minutes is not helping anything. You're not going to get more sleep. Right. You're not going to feel more rested. The, whatever's waiting for you, you know, out the hall or down the stairs or whatever, isn't going away. Get up. And that resolution did work, you know, like it really mm. did change my life. So um, similar to, you know, the changes Chris made in November, for whatever reason, I had the motivation on January 1st and I went for it. So that's one that worked for me. So if you're yeah. listening to this and you hit this news button, stop. It really does make a difference yeah. in your life. Yeah. And it had to be supported by the scientific literature for you to, <laughs> yeah. to, to pursue that loftily. Yeah. yeah. I really did. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I love that's that. A, that's a good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Allie. Seize the morning. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, She's ready. <laughs> so Brittany's reminded so I had two Brittany reminded me one of my big ones that was like easy and changed my life was sleeping with my phone outside of my room so I started doing that just about a year ago um I'm lucky that I don't have to be up by a certain time unless I have like an early appointment and I typically like my husband wakes up at six o'clock and he has an like his phone alarm so it goes off when I get up but um well, actually, he wakes up at four, but then he like does stuff and then wakes me up at six. So I don't need to have my phone next to me to wake up in the morning. Um, but if you do get a sunrise alarm clock, it's like 
such a game changer and it'll wake you up really nicely with like bird sounds and it getting brighter and sleep with your phone outside of your room because it is a game changer. Even if you have it on like airplane mode or silent or whatever, you still feel that like draw to pick it up. Or if you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't sleep, you like want to scroll and it like literally changed my life. But my other goal, which I think you can kind of like learn a little bit more from was because I didn't do it (laughs) was to (laughs) journal every day (laughs) was to journal every day. And I thought it was like a given something that I would love because I love to write. Um, and I just like love to be in my own thoughts and whatever. So I was like journaling, this is going to be great. I'm going to journal every day. And I like hated it. I did it for (laughs) six months. It felt like such a chore. I like could not stand it. And I started just going for walks instead as my like I mean, I've been walking for a really long time, but I started just leaning into like that being my stress relief or my like moment to myself or my moment to my thoughts. And kind of to speak to what Brittany said, where like your goals can kind of change, like the base of that goal was something that I do for myself that helps me like connect with me and the world and like where mm-hmm. I am, like being where my feet are, you know? And so I was like, journaling is the obvious thing. And it's okay if you set a goal and you don't think it like that you think it's going to work and it just doesn't feel right. And then you have to kind of like boil it back to like, okay, what's, where is this goal coming from? What do I actually want? And then if there's something else that serves that a little better, that's totally fine. And it doesn't mean you failed. It just means that you learned something that doesn't work for you. Totally. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You picked up a a, a habit that serves you better. Yeah. And uh, I often look at my like walks or walks in nature, whatever it might be, or hikes as just that internal monologue that you get to have with yourself from being where your feet are is in a sense, an internal uh, journaling that's happening. It's just not being put on paper, right? You're still giving yourself the time and space. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't make your hand hurt, (laughs) nor do you have to be reminded of how atrocious your handwriting handwriting is. is. None of us write with our hands anymore and it sucks. (laughs) I also like shouldn't say this, but like I'm an awful speller. Like spell check is my, I I mean, I edit the WAG blog. Thank God for Grammarly. Like I just can't spell. I was an English major. I can do everything else, but spelling, man. And so when I'm like writing, I'm like crossing things out and like Googling how to spell things because I don't want to spell it wrong in my journal. It's just not good for me. It's not good for my head. Hmm. That's yeah, that's that's really great. Chris, you got something? <laughs> uh, I was just going to make a joke about uh, Allie's 2023 uh, goal setting being to compete in her first spelling bee. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> what do we got to do to make that happen? <laughs> A local Vermont spelling bee, nothing crazy. Yeah, right? Yeah. (laughs) Like, it would be interesting to see, like, is there a local Vermont spelling bee? Like, There used to be one at my middle school. I'd probably lose. Sure there is. Yeah. (laughs) Are spelling bees, like, still a thing? Like, Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, They they totally are, yeah. Yeah, they're still good in this world, Josh. Come on. Good, wholesome, like, wholesome, fun. Good, wholesome kid fun. Oh, man. (laughs) Um, So you kind of touched, Al, you kind of touched on something that um, I I think we were eventually going to get there anyways, but since you you brought it up, um, Mm -hmm. and Brittany as well, the the idea of the goal changing um, in in a very natural, like, way, like, you didn't actually like look at the piece of paper and like cross journaling off and write walking instead, you know, like (laughs) it was just kind of like a natural like tendency for you. You're like, well, this doesn't really work for me. So I'm just going to go out for a walk. And that actually ended up being like um, uh, fulfilling the same purpose and everything. So, Mm. so for people that have like this goal, whether it's lofty or small um, and they get hung up, you know, uh, I think actually I read this last year, January 19th has been dubbed quitters day because <laughs> January 19th is all the further that people make it when it comes to their new year's resolutions. Yeah. Um, not quite the 20 days it takes to make something weeks. out of it. Huh? Yeah. Just yeah. Over two weeks. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. So like if you're, so for someone that might be listening to this, that does that, you know, every year or has like something that they're like, I'm going to do this. And then, you know, they, they get tripped up or these little things get in the way. Like, what would you say to, what, what would you say to them? What would you say to like someone that struggles with that kind of thing? Me and Brittany. Oh, Allie, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> there are a couple things that like come to mind right away. Um, the first is that your goal just might be too big. And I know that sounds like you sounds bad like 
you should shoot for the stars. And I mean, I worked for Lululemon forever and I ran their goal setting and their thing was like, if it doesn't make your hand sweat, it's not big enough. You know, like your goal is not big mm-hmm. enough. And I get it. And I think that that's true to an extent. Like we don't want to be setting goals that are like so easy. Like I'm going to wake up today. Like, yeah, you are like, you have to get out of bed, you know, like sure. things that you just set so that you feel good. But to an extent, you kind of have to like find that place in the middle, like aim a little lower than you think you need to, because the base of habit building and continuing to work towards a goal is building your self-confidence that you can actually do it. So if you're setting a goal that is either unrealistic or just like so far out from what you're normally doing, um, you're going to feel frustrated. And the second you feel frustrated and you come up against that that roadblock and the momentum or the motivation is no longer there because we all know motivation is comes and goes. It is not something you can rely on. It's like an emotion. Like sometimes you're sad, sometimes you're not, sometimes you're motivated, sometimes you're not. And if you're setting a goal that is so far out there and takes so much habit change at once that the second motivation's gone, you're done, it's not going to work. So in terms of like nutrition, if someone has a goal to lose X amount of weight or anything like that, but they like have no idea what's in the food they're eating or um, it's like an, a crazy amount of weight, you know, something like something like that. Like you have to, you have to start small, whether it's breaking it up into more manageable chunks or instead of changing every single habit. And if you eat out three meals a day, instead of setting the goal to now cook everything at home and spend four day, four hours meal prepping on Sundays, like maybe we just have one meal a day is something that you cook at home, you know? So like setting a goal that, requires some work but isn't so far out there that the second that it becomes hard you're done yeah i think is a huge thing Brittany. yeah i mean just exactly that and just to piggyback off of that i think it's important to think about life for what it is and what you're looking to get in the long run and what i mean by look at life at what it is is it is a series of learning experiences okay so when we set out to do something, very rarely do we set out to do something and we nail it the first time. I think most of us can think of very few experiences when we go out to do something and we get it right the very first time. I don't know that I have too many experiences in life when I've gone out and like, I'm going to do this. And you know what? I killed it first time. I'm the best <laughs> I've ever been, you know? So if you're very new, if, you know, we're talking about fitness and nutrition, you're very new to the fit, you know, to the nutrition game, or um, I'm getting back into the nutrition game and my nutrition's, you know, not the best right now. Chances are that first 19 days, you know, that you've spotted off being when most people fall off, they might not be the best 19 days ever. And that's okay. So let's fall back and look, okay, this is a learning experience. What did we learn from it? Okay. Mm-hmm. We learned that maybe we need to change X, Y, and Z. All right, let's now look at the next 19 days. How can we do those 19 days differently based on what we learned from the last 19 days? Sure. Then we can reassess again, maybe in two more weeks. And it's a continual loop of learning experiences. That's what life is, yeah. you know, because life is always changing. We're getting older. Our bodies are changing. Our, you know, our environment changes, different, different experiences, new jobs, kids, all these things change as life moves on and we have to learn to adapt and it's no different when you set goals. And if you just set out with one really strict set of guidelines, it's going to fail and you're going to fail. You have to be able to adapt and move and change as you go. That's awesome. I like the reevaluation thing. I think that's something that, I mean, I don't even really think about that. You know, it's just like checking in on yourself. It's like, you know, how is this going? you know, and, and, and being engaged with the process enough to, to be able to do that and be honest with yourself. That's, that's a unique, uh, like take on it. I think, I don't, I mean, maybe I'm the only one that doesn't, <laughs> doesn't do that, but, um, I think that's cool. I think that's a like great way to think about it. How um, often do you see that though? Like with clients, like this is something I've seen so recently with like resubscribing clients that come back to us and they'll say, well, last time I worked with you, this worked so well. Why right. is it not working this time? And I'm like, well, that was three years ago. Yeah. And life is real different now. Yeah. Like, it, we got to pivot and do something different. It doesn't mean that you're not working this hard right now. It just means that we need to do something different. Yeah. And that's okay. Like, you have to just continually reevaluate life and not only reevaluate your effort, but reevaluate what's around you. Sure. That's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I think yeah. something else um, that that just reminded me of is I think one of the biggest things when it comes to people setting goals that they get frustrated with and quit <laughs> is that it's not quite the right goal. Like it's a goal they think they want, mm. but it's not actually what they want. So yeah. I like to think about it like habit goals. Like I like goals can become habits the same way that a bad habit can become a bad habit, like biting your nails or something. If you do it for so long and it's just the way you do things, it's really normal to forget to like stop and be like, wait a second, is that still what I want? And I talk about this with clients all the time, especially people who are like, I want to get leaner. I want to lose five more pounds. I want to feel like this much better in the gym or like really it's the leaner, 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 leaner thing. And that is awesome. If that is your goal, like we help people get lean all the time and it's great. And there's nothing wrong with having that goal. And I think it gets to a point where you can take a step back and be like, okay, is this still what I want? Like, is the reason why it feels so hard to meal prep or the reason it feels so hard to track my macros, is the reason I'm dragging myself to the gym six days a week for two hours, is it because I don't actually care about that exact thing anymore? Yeah. And maybe it comes back to like reevaluating what the goal is. Um, and maybe the goal stays the same, but like your why behind the goal just needs a little bit of like mindset shift. But I think I talk with clients about that all the time. I'm like, wait a second, but how do you actually feel in your skin? Like if you took away your goal of getting leaner, how do you actually feel? And people are like, oh, I actually feel really good. I'm like crushing it in the gym. I like what I see in the mirror. I'm not hungry all the time. And I'm like, so what are we doing? <laughs> like what goal do we want to set next? Yeah. You know, because it just becomes a habit. If, especially like, I mean, I, I mean, I don't want to like say I see it with women more often than not, but I see it with women more often than not. Just like, yep. Like, I've always wanted to get leaner. It's what the world has told me I need to want, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and with guys, you could probably flip it around, like to get like stronger and more jacked and whatever. Like, yeah. that's just what the world has told me I want. And so here I am setting that goal again and yeah. getting okay. frustrated yeah. again, you know? Yeah. So it's just, that's a huge one, I think too. One of the great things that I kind of heard as a takeaway, an unsaid takeaway with your venture down trying to journal every day and hating it, <laughs> and then eschewing into um, walking daily because it was the thing that came natural to you. What I heard is you decided to pursue the path of least resistance Yeah. in, in your goal setting, which is yeah. oftentimes, sometimes the pivot that needs to happen. Like, right, there's this lofty goal or this expectation that that's a goal you should have based on societal norms or whatever is going on in your immediate circle or your social media uh, exposure. And you think you want that, right? Or you think it's going to do something good, but then you find this other thing along the way that benefits you uh, more, if not, you know, greatly uh, than the original goal that you set out mm -hmm. to do. And so you, you did, you aimed low, but kind of had higher success because it was something you were more inclined to do, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that's awesome. That's another mm -hmm. great, like, yeah, good takeaway there, Chris. <laughs> I was gonna ask, I was gonna ask you next about about that, like overcoming mm. that kind of like obstacle, you know, like um, I, I, p pivoting is. I mean, that's that's great. That's a great way to look at it. Yeah, mm -hmm. because yeah, pivoting isn't uh, taking off the path. It just might be taking another, uh, you know, a little offshoot of your path, right? right. <laughs> it's still getting yeah. into the destination. It just might be a little windier, a little curvier, whatever, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that can be scary, right? Like if yeah. you decided that this is this thing that you want and this is how I'm going to get there. And we should probably dig into that too, like actually breaking down a goal mm -hmm. because, and like talking about, especially with health and nutrition, how you can like boil a big goal back, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. To like daily habits. Cause I think that's so huge. Absolutely. Um, but it can be scary if you have something that you like think you wanted or have set a goal about and then been like, oh, wait, maybe not, you know, and like it takes a ton of strength and self-confidence to yeah. shift like that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And that's OK. And usually that's where you find something even better. You know, you just have to like yeah. embrace it. Yeah. So I didn't I swear to those listening, like I didn't send anyone any notes or anything like that. <laughs> that's like breaking down a goal that's literally like what i have like right here written down, mm -hmm. <laughs> written down it must be important <laughs> yeah it's important it is important and we all have our different processes and we've all done it a different way um so there's not one correct method for everybody but like ali since you kind of touched on that um would you care to elaborate a little bit more on that yeah 
setting a goal and then breaking it down into these like bite size pieces. Totally, totally. Um, so I like to start with setting the really big goal first, like that one year from now, where do I want to be? Or even like five years, 10 years, where do I want to be? Right. And those, especially like the five year, 10 year can be a little bit more like people talk about smart goals all the time. And I think that there's definitely a truth to it, but like, I think you can set a 10 year goal. That's not like super measurable. You can just have this idea of like how you want to feel or the kind of life you want to live. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you can boil it back to like, what does that look like five years from now? What does that look like one year from now? And then you can get into the, like the minutia of it. Right. So maybe if we're getting back into health and nutrition, maybe you do have some kind of weight loss goal. And you're like, by this time next year, I want to have lost. I'm just going to do math, really easy math, like 12 pounds. I mean, 20, let's do 24 because it sounds bigger and the math's still easy. <laughs> um, so that would be two pounds a month. Right. So, um, and we all know weight loss isn't linear. But then you can ask yourself, okay, like what do I need to be doing on a monthly basis to reach this goal? Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it's I check in with my WAG coach every week, like committing to showing up for your check-in. I'm going to take my progress pictures every week. I'm going to meal prep on Sundays. Um, that's an easy one. You don't have to meal prep to be successful with this. I never meal prep, but that's just an easy goal, example goal. Mm -hmm. um, and then, okay, so what do you have to do every day? to make that weekly goal possible, right? Or that daily or that monthly goal possible. And then you boil it down to a week and then you boil it down to a day. So maybe if you're newer to this, the goal starts with, I'm tracking my protein every day, you know? And like that can grow into a 25, a 24 pound weight loss, but it feels really manageable. It's something you can measure every day. It's a check offable goal. So I say like, at the end of the day, can you say, yes, I did it or no, I didn't. So setting some kind of daily goal that you can look back on and like concretely say, yes, I did it or no, I didn't. Um, and then really like writing it down in that list, like big goal, smaller goal, smaller goal, monthly goal, weekly goal, daily goal, and you can watch how it builds. So I like to start far out and go backwards. Um, sure. Yeah. I th Yeah. And I don't know if you're like literally talking about writing it out, but I yes. find that when I, yeah, when I write, like physically write something mm -hmm. out, th I don't know. I don't know the mechanism. I don't know the there's science, science to it. it. There, I, I'm sure there is, but it just yeah. like there's a something happens on a subconscious level that just sets like the wheels in motion. And I yeah. think that that's a very like practical and useful tip for someone. It's like don't put it in a note on your phone. Yeah. Don't type it on your computer. Or some you know put it someplace. Like write it down and put it someplace that you're mm -hmm. going to see it. Like yep. every single day. And yep. Something like I said, something happens. I don't know what, but something happens. Yeah. No, there's science easier. to writing it for sure. Um, and then the other thing you have to remember is I'm gonna like go back on that a teeny bit because there's science to writing it and do it, but that does not mean it's set in stone. So sure. I think sure. a lot of people also get nervous about writing goals down because like, what if I change my mind? It's like that's what an eraser's for. Like, you know, <laughs> like it's okay to change your mind, but still write it down because it's what you want right now. And if it changes, you can write it again. There's more pens and papers, you know, like feeling nervous that it's getting you stuck in one spot is like not a good reason to not write them something down. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Britt. Yeah. I mean, just again, to like reiterate it, I think I'm, a, I have a personality that I tend to get overwhelmed easily. Like if there's a huge mm. mess of something in front of me, like I'll get overwhelmed. So I have to, and this goes for anything. I really have to chunk things down. Like, this is just, I am, I have to have a calendar. I have to have things laid out. Like I really have to chunk things down. So whether it's in my own life and a client's life with goals, I really want to have things laid out. Um, and I think that helps when you're, someone wants to know a plan. If I'm working with a client, if I'm working with my own life, I want it laid out. I want to know, yeah. okay, this is where we, I want to go. How are we going to get there? all right, this is how I think we can get there. We might get a month into this and we might look at each other and go, mm -mm, not working. And you know what? We're going to do exactly what Chris said. We're going to deviate and take a different plan and that's okay. But this is what I, how I think we're going to get there. Um, so just chunking it down and breaking it out and to where we're going to go. And what I think is also we can tie into this is just being intentional with yourself and your actions and being true to why this kind of goes back to what Allie was saying before with why you want this goal mm -hmm. um I think a lot of times people feel these like 
pressures of like, we're going to pick this really big, bright, shiny goal of, you know, I want to lose 50 pounds or something massive. But maybe it's like, I just want to eat healthier. Like, yeah. that's an okay goal too. Totally. Like, it doesn't have to be yeah. something yeah. massive, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it can be whatever you want it to be. And just like Ali said, like, it can pivot and shift through the through the year. And that's an okay thing as well. When we talk about setting goals, it's like, just pick something that feels true to you to work on. Right. And as we get going or as you get going through the year or whenever you decide to start working on it, if something happens that you miss the mark and it doesn't work, you're not a failure. Like, that's the one thing I think when you heard me say earlier, like, eh, it hasn't always worked out for me on New Year's resolutions. <laughs> not because I failed. Like, try to reframe that thought. Like, you're not a failure. It's like, I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. Like, yeah. you know, um, two, three years ago, maybe three years ago, I had a goal that I was going to get a ring muscle up that year. It was going to happen. COVID said, no, it's not. <laughs> gym, <laughs> you know, gym shut down. That wasn't going to happen. And lots of other reasons as well. You know, I had part of the year where gyms were open and it sure didn't happen that year. So it didn't happen. And was I a failure? Maybe I could have looked at it that way that I was, but I was able to reframe it and go, "Mm -mm, no, I'm just going to shift. I'm going to learn some other stuff that year, you know, things that I can do in my garage gym. So it's like, you just have to reframe your thoughts around your goals and keep moving forward. So I think a lot of people just, pick this big bright shiny thing because of the societal pressure and you don't have to do that yeah pick what's true to you take it yeah Mm -hmm. i love that yeah um yeah like like a real life example uh that i'm working on is like a random goal it's not really a goal but it's just something i figured kind of like a why not thing uh recently so you know i've just been like kind of bodybuilding just doing strength resistance training four times a week for past year or so. Um, and I just love that I'm in my forties. My goal is to just put on muscle mass and keep acquiring muscle mass as I age, you know, to keep me healthy, looking decent, uh, capable of doing all the things that I want to do, cycling, hiking, um, whatever, picking my motorcycle up off the ground. If I ever put it down, you know, just these little like life things that I think about, it's kind of like aside from the aesthetics. Right. But in this, I'm like, uh, as many may know, as like, I left CrossFit some years ago, but I was like, you know what I really enjoyed doing though with being good at back in the day was double unders. And it's not something I've really done in years. So the past two weeks, I've been picking up my jump rope and adding it as like the supplemental thing to my strength training, just because I also don't really do a lot of like my steps aren't up in the winter time. I'm not hiking as much. So I'm like my lifestyle factors are at play. So I'm not really working on any sort of like endurance or cardio aspect to kind of keep me like a well-rounded. Sure. So I was like, let me implement some double unders, um, as like a hit workout at the end of my workout, at least twice a week. And so I've done that now successfully four days, the last two weeks. And all I'm doing is just like picking up that jump rope. And I'm just starting with the jumping rope, just doing that for 30 seconds on 30 seconds off for 20 rounds, getting my heart rate up, just getting the movement down. And then I did that for the first week. And then the second week I went 10 minutes for just jumping rope. And then the second 10 minutes of the hit split, I then worked on the double unders, which were admittedly very sloppy, lots of whipping of the shins, all those beginner mistakes that we made, but all it took was two days. And then I'm getting in that rhythm again. And I got that pattern down in that, that we all know that sound of just like double unders being executed flawlessly, how rhythmic and tempo based that is. And where you just shut your eyes and you're just at one with the rope, like that was starting to happen again. And it took very little to get me back there, having not been somebody who's picked up a jump rope for literally three years since my last CrossFit class. Right. And so that felt like a big uh, achievement. And I'm also getting my heart rate up. So I'm kind of like fulfilling these other needs while also improving on a skill that I once had um, and only really did because it came as a, a, you know, subsequence of doing CrossFit and not something I actually seeked out. Um, so that's been really cool for me recently. It's just like adding that in and uh, getting that skill set back. You yeah. Know? And yeah. what's interesting is that you just kind of describe exactly like what Allie and Brittany were talking about, like breaking down the goal. You started with 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. Yep. Then you went to 10 minutes of straight jump roping and then 10 minutes of straight practice. Yep. And then like as you broke down the steps to that within two days, 
whatever yes. you, whatever it took it's like you you got it back so that's yeah just more you know evidence that that is like a proper and well-rounded approach yeah greasing the wheels to keep the gears moving smoothly after i get the hang of it kind of thing you know yeah. it's like yeah yeah totally. so yeah so that's been uh that's felt great so chris um, what do you okay. do with your hair during double unders uh it is very much in the uh <laughs> backwards the bun, bun as it is now yeah uh, sometimes i just let it loose maybe i oh. could take a video of that just letting it fly but you know no. <laughs> oh no, no i, I get it. i now get what um uh, many uh women in my crossfit classes were complaining about with double unders and how tousled their <laughs> hair would get so i feel you i feel you <laughs> yeah and in terms of nutrition, you could build it back up the same way, right? Like if you've never tracked your food before, you could start, like, I'm just thinking about his like 30 seconds on 30 seconds off, blah, blah, blah. But like, you could do the same thing. So we have a lot of people come to us who have not really tracked their food or haven't tracked their food in a while. And it's a great way to learn what's in your food, tracking mm -hmm. it or how much you're eating every day and getting a baseline for like what feels good in your body based on your goals. So maybe as a coach, we start by like, just having you play around in your food tracker and not trying to hit specific targets, just like playing around with tracking things. And maybe you're using cups and spoons instead of exact measurements, because that's just a little bit easier, you know? Um, and it just helps you get to know the app. And then maybe you start tracking one macro, which is usually protein because most of us don't eat enough of it unless we're tracking it. Right. And then maybe mm -hmm. we had the goal of tracking protein and eating vegetables with two meals a day, you know, and then maybe right. from there you're tracking, protein and healthy fats. And then you're, you know, so like it works the same way um, with, with nutrition as it does with fitness, where you can say, okay, like I want to do a hundred other um, unbroken double unders or in like nutrition language, like I want to like track my food consistently for a month. Right. And see how, and to get a baseline for how many calories help me reach my goal, whether it's weight loss, weight maintenance or weight, um, weight gain, and you can build up to that goal, right? And it kind of comes back to like starting simple or setting like a low-ish goal, aiming low. Um, Cause you want to just start with that thing that feels like you're learning, but it's attainable, right? right. Um, so in terms of nutrition, like that's how that same thing could play out. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's you know, touching back on the nutrition thing. That's, I mean, what, what we do um, here at WAG is help people figure out what those next, what those steps are going to be you yeah. know, like like you said before just the, using your arbitrary number um we want to lose you know 24 pounds this <clears> year so you know two pounds a month and then it's up to us or i mean whether it's us or you're doing it yourself or if you're working with someone else to f work together and figure out how that's going to be achievable and also like realistic because you know there there's sometimes the goal is like it, weight loss doesn't happen it's not a linear thing um, but sometimes the goal is like, yo, like uh, you want, you want to lose 30 pounds in the next 60 days. Like, mm, I don't know. That's going to be, we should probably <laughs> talk about that a little bit. And those are hard <laughs> conversations to have too. Um, but that being said, you can figure out what is going to be realistic and also like make you feel super good. Just again, Allie, like you were talking about, you know, even if you don't hit a goal specifically, it's like, well, check in on the other things. It's like, how do you feel? How's the gym going? Like, do you feel healthier? Do you have more energy? How's your mood? And if you're checking all these boxes, it's like things are going pretty well. You know, yeah. your goal still might be to lose, you know, a little bit more weight or whatever, you know, but if you can check all those boxes and you're feeling pretty good, like li life's good. People struggle just to feel good. I think people mm -hmm. forget that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think what you said about the, like the hard, like, oh, those are hard conversations to have, like, you're so right. And they're so necessary. And I think that that's one of the things that I love about being a nutrition coach and working with people is like, what I see is that people aren't setting goals and then just not achieving them because they don't, they're not trying hard enough. They just like, it takes a lot of knowledge and background in nutrition and how weight loss works to know like what's actually a realistic weight loss goal. Like a lot of people come to me with a weight loss goal. That's just like a number they heard online or something that just sounds really good. Like Brittany said, like this shiny thing. And the reality is it's not impossible like overall, but right. in the time frame you've set, it probably is just because of the way like science works. Um, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> the way your body works and and sometimes just having someone be able to like walk you through that and be like, so here's a goal that actually makes sense based on what you're telling me and it is going on in your life and what you want and your body right now and what you can commit to. And then you don't get so frustrated 
Cause mm-hmm. we see a lot of people right. set a goal like and quit because they've set this goal that actually just like isn't a realistic goal, but they didn't know that. And so now they just feel like they didn't do it well enough or they failed. But the reality was like the goal just wasn't the right goal in the first place. Um, it just needed a little bit of shifting. So those conversations are so hard to have, but they're so awesome because a lot of the time it just comes down to someone being like, Oh, okay, great. Love that goal. Now that I know mm-hmm. that that's ha- like more realistic, let's do right. that. You know? Yeah. Right. It is that breaking down of helping someone understand the science behind and the reasoning behind yeah. why progress can take time. And it is yeah. a, a um, it's a side effect of the society that we live in and our interconnectedness in the world with everything being mm-hmm. immediate and quick. We can get our news quick. We can get the weather quick. We can get immediate satisfaction. And most things in life, I could have Chick-fil-A DoorDash to me right now. <laughs> and that's a pretty fantastic world we live in. But what we have to do as coaches is help our clients reframe uh, this expectation they have to be more of a realistic expectation that is either aligned with their reality or is out of alignment with the reality that they are currently in mm-hmm. um, and making sure the two aren't in opposition of one another. You know, okay. it's uh, we have to realize that essentially there's an education thing that goes on that helps people understand that particular habits and behaviors have either a positive or negative consequence. And it is the accumulation of the habits and behaviors that have gotten to you to this point where you don't feel good, you want to make a change, you have a desire to make a change, and then to achieve success on the other side is going to require a changing of your habits and behaviors to have more positive consequence than negative. So it's starting to steer the ship in a different direction. And it's breaking down that understanding that is like this long, lifelong pursuit of um, willingness to put the effort in and delaying, you know, this satisfaction, like this temporary satisfaction for a greater return on those, you know, those things you're willing to sacrifice in the moment, uh, short-term, long-term, whatever it may be. So, uh, we face a lot when new clients come in, uh, because their expectations are grand and we have to put them into perspective for them. And it's one of the hardest, things that we work against as uh, nutrition coaching clients is, and there's our nutrition coaches and there's a lot of emotions tied to that yeah. misunderstanding. Right. Yeah. But it but is uh, really cool when you can like hit it home for someone. Right. And then, yes. then they mm-hmm. start getting really excited about the progress they're seeing because we've like realigned or like redefined what progress looks like. Absolutely. Yeah. It's such a liberating and happy moment when like a client can reiterate what we have learned through our own processes and journeys to be like, ah, the light bulb went off for you. Let's keep that light bulb on though. You know, let's make sure it doesn't dim, (laughs) you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Cause if you, someone comes in and they want, you know, a super fast cut, they want to lose 30 pounds. Okay. That's some arbitrary number you heard online. We can do that. Like we can cut you super fast and do that. But if you're going to, when this is over, you've learned nothing. Mm-hmm. You go along your merry way and that weight all comes right back to you. Plus some, we have done nothing for you. I have left you worse off than when you came to yeah. us. And that is the exact opposite of what we want for our clients, what I want for any person out there in the world. And that is very delicate line to walk because I know that feeling personally, you know, like when you come to WAG or you come to any nutrition coach and you really want that answer, or you really want someone's help and you, you know, you want to see progress quickly. Um, and then imagine someone's frustration when, you know, here we are coming back to them going, mm, let's pump the brakes just a little <laughs> bit. But I think we, what we do really well and, you know, I try to instill in all of our coaches as well, the education behind it to say, okay, let's just pump the brakes a little. And here's why. Um, And there certainly are clients who come to us who can lose weight a little faster, but for the vast majority of people, we need to slow it down just a little bit. So it's a sustainable weight loss long-term, you know, we don't want to keep clients forever. That's not what we're here for. We're here to teach you how to do this. So this is a sustainable lifestyle for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's an interesting business model to have this idea that our success essentially lies in uh our clients not needing our help anymore. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Not requiring our services because we've shown them too much, we've taught <laughs> them too much, and it's like most hopefully won't be willing to drop below that bar 
that we've helped them set anymore, right? Because yeah. they're, they're now off. They're a new, they're a new you. They're a new person uh, willing to uh, stick to these things that are now disciplined and take little to no effort, you know, from the work that they're willing to put in. So, yeah, it's yeah. a pretty, uh, pretty profound measure of success, ultimately. Sure. And I think a lot of people want to get there. They just, it's the patience aspect, right? Yeah. That's yeah. the greatest and I, practice. And I think in terms of patience, and this kind of ties into like the one really big piece of goals and we haven't even hit yet is like enrolling other people in your goals and talking about them and telling people so that when you are getting impatient, you have some kind of accountability, whether it's a partner or a sibling or a parent or a really good friend or anything like that, anyone like that to be like, hey, like you've told me you want this. Um, just even like just someone to remind you, you know, or if you feel like you're letting someone else down, if you quit on yourself. Right. And I think that telling other people about your goals is honestly, like, I can tell you right now that I would not be sitting here talking to you guys if I hadn't done that. Um, like I ended up, like I set a goal to go to a cross, like to get my CrossFit L1 before I even cared about nutrition. And when I got driving to a CrossFit gym and um, this was a Lululemon time. So I, my goals were up on the wall and someone was like, oh, I'm actually going in three weeks. Come with me, you know? And she like never would have said that to me if she hadn't like seen my goals written down, posted on the wall. And that's how I got into nutrition and how I found WAG and how I'm sitting here. And I, I don't, you never know I could still be sitting here, but I probably wouldn't be if I hadn't like written that goal down and put it on a wall. And it's just mm -hmm. wild to me that like, something that felt like nothing in the moment, like literally changed the trajectory of my life. And people are there to help you and want to help you and have connections. And the more you can be talking about the things you want, obviously like within reason and not obnoxiously, yeah. like, <laughs> like um, the more help you're going to get. And it might come from a really unexpected place. And so just tell people about your goals, put them up in your gym, like start a yeah. thing where people write them down and put them on the wall, you know, like, put them up on your fridge where you see them and your partner sees them. You know, it's just, it's yeah. such a game changer. That's, mm. I mean, I was I, the, we're, we're getting, getting close to closing out the podcast. This, this is exactly like what I wanted to ask everyone about is like, what is the most important part? You know, if you could give one actionable step to someone, you know, listening to this, or what is the most important part in your opinion about goal setting and being successful um, in that endeavor like, what would it be? And I, I mean, that's a great one. I mean, you do. Yeah, that would be said, mine. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's great. <laughs> Brittany, what would you say? It's kind of hard to pick one. It is. Persistence. Persistence. Yeah. You really have to keep going. Mm. It's a tough world out there, right? Yeah. You have to keep going. Life is going to throw you all kinds of curveballs. You know, no matter what your goal is, no matter how big or how small, something's going to come up that's going to totally throw you off your game. This week, next week, two weeks down the road, it's going to keep happening and you have to keep fighting. It's if this stuff was easy, we'd all have the body of our dreams. Like, let's be honest, like we all would. And it's hard. Like these goals are really challenging and you'll never run into a person who looks exactly they, the way they want to look. And they'll tell you they got there easily. Like the, it's hard and you have to stay persistent and you have to just keep believing in yourself. And no matter what comes up, you have to just, like I said earlier about, you know, being flexible and dodging, you know, dodging the things that come along. You also have to stay persistent and just keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Chris, what do you think? Mm -hmm. In all my <laughs> reflection and years of experience, I think my the greatest takeaway when it comes to the pursuit of health and happiness, it is a willingness to improve the integrity that you keep with yourself. Um, bottom line, because it, it comes down to you, because whether or not you're reaching your goals, you are the person to blame. And, uh, and that's not to be a negative thing at all. It's just acceptance of the reality of it, right? Nobody's going to achieve these goals for you. Not your coach, not your fans, not your family. Like it is you putting in the work. And we often have the integrity we keep with other people. We show up for a podcast taping on time. We show up to meetings on time. We do the thing that we say we're going to do with other people because we're glad to show up and have that integrity with others. But if we don't maintain that integrity with ourselves, 
what else do you have? You know? And so being able to show up and having the willingness to show up and have those appointments with yourself, whether it's getting your workout in your daily walks, uh, your journaling, uh, every time you do that, that's a rep that's being put in that builds towards the integrity of the character of the person or the identity, identity of the person you want to become. And I don't know when it comes to all things in life, it comes down to the character and the integrity that you keep. And so for me, that's the thing that I show up and I work on every single day uh, without fail. Cause there's something literally that I will do every day that contributes to that adding to my integrity. And it helps me be a better coach and a better person, a better friend. And, um, it's a, it's a no brainer. It's a win win for me. So it's kind of like one of those things. It's like, why wouldn't I do that? And, uh, so no, no amount of time and the time and energy that you invest in yourself will always compound and it'll always have a return on your investment of time and energy. So why the F not just do it. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, every, if you're not watching the podcast, if you're listening to it, everyone on the screen is smiling right now. <laughs> Yeah, because that's a, that's that's awesome. My, I mean, yeah. mine mine would just be piggybacking on that and just tell people to just start, like just mm -hmm. take action. You might not have it all figured out right this very minute, and that's okay. Like, but if you have the first step, just take that first step, and mm -hmm. things will start to happen. You'll figure things out. You know, if you tell people about your goals and you know you take Ali's advice, you know, bring other people into the fold. Like, you have that. You're gonna draw in that accountability you know and then when you inevitably get tripped up you know persistence like Brittany was talking about you know that's going to get you through and you can involve other people in that as well and then of course like what chris just said everything was just awesome every i can i shouldn't even try to even re restate everything there because it was great but uh but uh, yeah just you know the self-accountability you know holding yourself to that high standard is going to get you through so mm -hmm. this is awesome um, thank you all so much for coming on the uh, podcast today. Uh, I hope that everyone listening had, had got a little nugget to take away, you know, and uh, start their new year off in a good, solid, positive direction. Um, and if you are interested in, in getting a coach and, and tackling some of your uh, New Year's goals, uh, check us out, workinggainstgravity.com. You can work with uh, me and Chris and Brittany and Allie or any of our other awesome coaches. Um, and we would love to meet you too. So if that's your jam, uh, please come and check us out. Um, so yeah, th thank you so much, Allie, for coming on and Brittany. Of course. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having us. Of course. And uh, for everyone listening, just as an additional note, if you check the show notes of this podcast, uh, we will link you to our goal setting guide and worksheet. So if you want to outline your goals and break them down, uh, we have the tools to enable you to do that. So please definitely check that out and uh, let us know how that's going. Uh, you know, hit us up on, uh, working against gravity on Instagram. We'd love to hear, uh, what you're working on. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you all for tuning in and we'll see you guys next time.